All right, good afternoon, everyone. I want to welcome you to our um, success experts presentation that we are hosting today, making sure that you are in the right location. Um, this is our success experts presentation today on prioritizing your time with the Center for Student Success. Uh, we do have an opportunity to host workshops similar to these throughout the academic semester. And today we're gonna be talking about something that we all can certainly benefit from. And I'm sure that you've had your own experiences with time, with procrastination, with prioritizing your time and your to-do list. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit more in depth about what that looks like. What does it look like when you procrastinate? What does it look like um, as you're prioritizing your tasks and your to-do list? I know that you're with me um, at noon on a Tuesday, but there are certainly so many other things that you have to get done. Certainly things that you've already done today and some other things that you still got to get completed today. So we're going to talk about what does that look like when you have a list of things, sometimes it can be overwhelming, and how do you determine what needs to be completed when. So we'll talk about that now. So I'll go ahead and get our presentation up. And I will share my screen for you guys. Okay, are you all able to see that? Yes? Okay. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with prioritization, prioritizing your time. Um, so the big P word I always like to say, um, the P word is procrastination. I feel like all of us at some point have talked about what does it mean to be a procrastinator? Or what does it mean to prioritize your time and your to-do list or things that it is that you have to get completed? So let's look more in depth in with that today. Okay, so our discussion today, we're gonna to talk about why manage time. So we hear all about time management, time management. Here, come get a planner, use your phone, use your Outlook calendar. Why is that important? Why is it important for us to manage our time? Why do we procrastinate? How do and what should we prioritize? Then we're gonna talk about the four quadrants. I'm not sure if you've heard of those, but I use them um, pretty much every day. And I think it's important uh, for you to understand the importance and categorization of your to-do list items so that you can put them in their proper quadrant and you can know what needs to be done now and maybe what I can push off to tomorrow or a little bit later in the week. So we're gonna talk about a little bit of strategies and then we're gonna finalize with some considerations as you are moving forward um, after today's session. So Henry David Thoreau says, it is not enough to be busy, so are the ants. The question is, what are we busy about? So you've probably been like me and you've had one of those days where you have gone throughout the entire day and you felt like you did a lot. Like, okay, I got a lot done today, or at least I felt like I got a lot done. But then you think to yourself, but what exactly did I do? <laughs> you still notice that there are things on your to-do list that still went undone, but you're like, but I don't feel like I was like sitting around twiddling my thumbs, yet there are things that I didn't do. So maybe you were busy. I'm not gonna take that away from you. We were busy, but maybe we weren't busy about the right things. And so it still left some things on our to-do list um, that need to be completed. And so they we just pushed them off to the next day. And then by the end of the week, you're like, okay, yeah, so I still have a whole bunch of things I need to do. What did I do this week? Where did the time go? You have the same amount of hours every single day. Sometimes we use those hours effectively and sometimes we don't. So let's not be like the ants. We're so much better than them, right? Um, so let's make sure that we are prioritizing our time and our to-do list items so that we can use our time most effectively. So let's get to it. So why manage time? We manage time because it aids in achieving your academic potential, right? So if you're wanting to make a 4.0 this semester, I'm sure many of you, I know that some of your Jubilee scholars, many of you have probably already heard about SMART goals, right? So we talk a lot about that. I know we beat it in your head, SMART goals. So you have this incredible SMART goal to make a 3.5 GPA this semester. You think you're just gonna do it by just like waking up and just like lollygagging through the day. It's not gonna happen. 
you have to manage your time. Managing your time helps to achieve that goal of getting that 3.5, that 3.2, that 4.0, joining a sorority, because that's going to take time, right? Joining a fraternity, getting a new job, getting more money. All of those things are more activities in your day. So more activities in your day means it takes away from some other things. So you're really going to have to become really strict about managing your time. So number one, it aids in your academic potential. You're being able to plan and schedule. It helps to organize your time effectively to achieve your goals. So yeah, if I'm trying to get a 3.5 GPA, but I don't have a simple major, right? I'm trying to be a doctor. I'm, I'm, I'm in all these science classes, this chemistry. I've really got to be strict about my time because I've got to study organic. I've got to make sure that I'm using my time effectively because I can't just hang out with my friends all the time. Why? Because I got to go and be prepared for this five page paper that I have tonight or this lab report that I have to do. So I'm able to do that by managing my time. Yeah, I can go and have fun. Yeah, I can go visit family. I can go work my job so that I can have money. But I also need to make sure that I'm using time wisely enough to study. So it helps you to also gain skills that are highly transferable for any career path. Those skills can range anywhere from delegation to independence, initiative, problem solving and problem resolution, as well as self-motivation. And so these are things that we utilize every day in the office. Um, so when it comes to initiative, if I see something that needs to be done, I'll do that. I'm able to have time so that I can do that. If I think that there's something that's maybe a little bit too much on my plate, maybe I'll delegate that to someone else to do. I'll ask if one of our student workers can assist with the project, or I'll ask if one of our graduate assistants can assist with something. It's being able to free up some space on my calendar to get these other things to done and seeing if I can ask someone else for assistance. And so that's helping me in managing my time. And you can do that too as a full-time student, as part-time student, you can do that as a student and those types of skills will help you as you transfer into full-time employment after graduation. It's about managing your time. Being a good steward of your time gives you the ability to be a, good, be a good employee. And that comes with delegating, right? Comes with leadership, comes with delegating, independence, having initiative, problem resolution, like, oh, this is something that needs to get done today. I'm unable to do that, but it's pertinent for the office. We need someone to take over and do this. Um, Self-motivation saying like, hey, I've got a lot of things that I wanna do this week. There's this program that I need to complete for my Jubilee Scholars, but I've got to get this done for Lucky Day, and I've got to get this done for our Eagle First students. Let me make sure that I'm prioritizing my time so that I can make sure to get it all done at the proper time. So those are all things that I do and my colleagues do every single day. So if you're learning how to do that now, it's just going to make you that much more, um, you know, prepared when you go into your full-time employment. So those are transferable skills. So those are not things that you just learn in your undergraduate career, and then they're just there. No, those things are going to help you stand out um, after um, graduation. And then it gives you balance. It gives you balance and ownership of your progress. So prior planning and scheduling gives you control over your time to ensure that some sort of balance is maintained. So what this says is it basically helps you to be able to keep track of where you are, yet where you still have to go. So it's that balance and that progress ownership. So yeah, I've gotten this much completed, yet I still have this much to be done. So you're not like super celebrating like, oh, I got all that done. Well, yeah, baby, you did that. Congratulations. But you still got some other stuff that needs to be done. I'm able to do that because I've managed my time. On a normal, I'll say normal, on a normal work day, our work day is about eight hours, right? So if I'm, I'm going to work, I have about eight hours of my day. I'm typically going to split that up to say, you know, maybe the first half of my day, it's going to be maybe student related or student meetings, student preparations. I'll go to lunch midday. After lunch, it may be more planning and preparation for events and programming. I'm able to do that because when I go to work, I'm managing my time. I know that I only have eight hours that day, but eight hours a day. If I have a presentation at noon, that's one hour. Now I only have seven hours. Okay. If I have a student meeting, that could be another hour. Okay, now I only have six hours, but I still got these projects I need to complete. I still got programs and events that I need to complete. Then I still have some student meetings and things to do. So you're making sure that you're keeping progress of where you are, how much you've done, yet still the things that you have to do. And so that gives me ownership. It makes me feel good and balanced and maintaining um, the things that I've done yet, yet still have to do. 
Okay, so the big P word that I mentioned in the beginning, procrastination. This is not a new word. It's not foreign to you. I know that you know all about it, but we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about what this is and how we can, and notice I said can, can overcome it. Procrastination is defined as deliberately delaying one's initiative, motivation, or progress towards completing a task despite knowing that this delay may be harmful. And so <clears throat> for me, the word that sticks out the most is deliberately. It's probably one of those like ouch moments because it's saying that you're doing this despite knowing, like, right, you, you are well-versed. You know that what you're doing is going to hurt you, yet you're doing it anyway. It's like looking at fire and it's like, okay, I know that's hot, but yet I'm still going to touch it. Ah, it burns me, right? So procrastination is deliberately delaying your initiative. Deliberately, you are deliberately delaying your motivation. You are deliberately de delaying your progress. And I'm saying you, but I'm really meaning me too. We're doing this, although we know it's going to hurt us, right? Although knowing that the delay may be harmful, so it's like, okay, yeah, I know I got to get that paper done, but I just really don't feel like doing it right now. So I'm just going to put that on the back burner. It's like, okay, I know I got to get it done, but I just, I can't right now. It's hurting you, right? At some point, it's really going to hurt because when the due date comes about and you know that you've got to have it submitted and then now you're frantically, ah, and that's why I use the images that I have here on the screen. Um, so at the very bottom, you'll see the guy, he is, laying on the sofa and he's like throwing the paper airplane it's like oh I'll throw the air paper airplane in the trash can oh I'll do a cartwheel but then at 11 55 p.m and the paper is at 11 59 he's frantic at the desk like typing away he's like oh my gosh I've only got 15 minutes and I've got a whole bunch of other stuff I need to put in the powerpoint in the paper or whatever it is that you're submitting it's like well I kind of procrastinated all day maybe all week maybe all month and then now at the last minute I'm freaked out right and so that's really what procrastination is it's like I'm delaying working on this because I I just I don't have the motivation to do it I don't have the initiative to do it and it's probably going to hurt me in the long run but oh well that is what procrastination is why do we do that right all humans procrastinate at some point on something so don't feel bad about it. I'll say that you're not alone. This is not the first time you procrastinated. And let's be honest, it's probably not going to be the last, but you can combat it, right? There's the ways that you can overcome it. And that includes prioritization. So when you learn to prioritize your work, it will help you combat procrastinating your work. And that is the emphasis that we are going to talk about today is prioritizing. Okay, so procrastination warning. So this is something that you need to be on the lookout for. So red flag, procrastination threatens your success. It's kind of like, okay, yeah, duh. What does that mean? So constant procrastination could create stress that results in poor performance and lack of motivation to later perform. So the more I procrastinate, the less likely I am to want to do the thing that I need to get done. So it messes with my motivation, right? So if you know that there's a paper or a project, I say paper, but there's a project or task or something that you need to work on and you've known about it, let's say since the beginning of school. So since you first came back in January and it's due, let's say Friday, it's due Friday. You were never really super excited about it. So that's one thing. So let's start there. But as it gets closer and closer to the due date and you realize that you still haven't completed it, your motivation it, for completing it, it just gets worse because you're just like, it's Friday now. It's due Friday. It's Tuesday. Like, I don't even know why I need to start now. I'm not going to have time to do it. Like, I really should have started a while ago. Well, you knew that. You knew you should have started a while ago. But now that it's due Friday, you're like, well, I'm not, I don't have time to complete it now. So your motivation just like plummeted. Before you were super motivated, you weren't super ever excited about doing it, but you were more thoughtful and do, like, okay, I'm going to get it done at some point. And then as the weeks pass, you're like, oh, I, I gotta, I'll find time. Uh. And then now the week of, you're like, oh, well, like, I don't really see the point now. Look what happened. And that all happened because you procrastinated because you waited till the last minute. And now you're like, I don't see the point because I don't have enough time to get it done. 
Not only does it do that, but it also creates the greater opportunity to do poorly on the work because you don't have as much time to do it. You know, had you started a week or two ago, you could have had some time for a friend or someone to look over it. You could have had your TA look over it. Your professor could have look at, look, taken a look at it. You could have even come to our office, the Center for Student Success. We're not faculty, but we're staff. We've been in school. We can take a look at it, take a stab at it. We can even refer you to other people that can look at it. They're tutors. You could have gone to the writing center, the speaking center. Um, those are free services, right? Or I say free. It's paid for through tuition, right? So you, it's free to you now. Go ahead and use it. So those are things that could have happened. But the later you wait to get them done, now it's like, well, I'm not going to do well on it anyway. So now it has just threatened your success. Procrastination has just threatened your opportunity to get that 3.5, that 3.2, that 4.0, whatever it is GPA that you were hoping for, it's making it harder for you to get that now just because you waited. It's not because you're not capable of doing it. It's not because you can't get it done. It's, you're in college, right? You got here. There are a lot of people that didn't get here. You, there's a lot of people that want to be where you are right now. So you're here, right? You're able to get the work done. So you not doing it is not based on your capability. Is based on your procrastination. Is based on you your want to, not your how to, but your want to. Just because you don't want to. So procrastination also counters the idea of happiness. So think about it. You know that tackling your to do list will make you happier. It feels good to get things done, right? It, it makes us feel accomplished. I am very much a Santa Claus type person, right? I like making a list, checking it twice and checking things off. It feels good. You're like, okay, I did that. You know, it's like, I did this, I did that. Boss moves, right? Like you feel good when you get things done, when you feel accomplished. It's almost like exercising. Like a lot of people really don't like it, but when you do it, it releases positive endorphins and then you start feeling good. You're like, oh, I feel skinny already, you know? So when you tackle your to-do list, it feels good to you because you're checking things off. You feel a sense of accomplishment, right? A sense of worth, like I did that. So you feel less stressed. You feel more content. You feel good about yourself. And then on the flip side, choosing not to do that thing, it counters the idea of happiness. So when you don't do it, it makes you not feel good about yourself. So if doing things makes you feel good right? makes you feel accomplished when I don't do them when I procrastinate it makes you feel the complete opposite it makes you feel like a terrible person <laughs> you know if you're like a super ambitious or super busy person or a person that stays busy sometimes ooh, I, don't feel, I don't feel so great I'm like what's wrong I just feel like I didn't do anything today and it's not that you're a bad person it's just because you didn't do as much as maybe you had planned or had hoped to, and it counters that idea of happiness for you. Um, so that's what procrastination does for us. It kind of affects our sense of happiness in a way. Um, it's often viewed as a coping strategy. So it's often used to avoid a perceived threat of the task. So just like the word procrastination, when we looked at that definition of deliberate, that word stood out to me. When we look at this, it says it is often used to avoid the perceived threat of a task. That word also stands out to me because we are saying that I'm not going to do this because I just, I'm afraid, like, I'm not going to be able to do it anyways. I'm not going to understand the work. Like, that is a perception. That is, that is not true. It is not always true. That is something that you are just believing, right? In your mind, you're thinking that, like, I'm just, I'm not going to be able to get it done. I, I might as well. And, and this could be with anything. It doesn't just have to be with academics. We're using academics because we're in an academic setting, but it could be starting a weight loss journey. Like, why well, start my weight loss journey? Like, I'm not going to lose weight anyways. Like, I'm not going to, I'm probably not going to get to where I want to be. Like, I'm probably not going to meet my goal. Or if I do meet it, I'm probably just going to gain the weight back anyway. So why? What? Like, that is a coping strategy. Like, you procrastinate starting the diet because you feel like you're not going to reach your goal. Or if you're wanting to start a business, right? You want to be an entrepreneur. Like, why start? Why start my LLC? Like, I'm probably not going to get the business anyway. I'm probably not going to be able to get customers. Or if I get clients, I'm probably not going to be able to retain them. So I'm just not going to start. Excuse me? So you are having this coping mechanism of procrastinating, starting that thing, just because you're afraid that you're not going to be able to retain or you're not going to be able to complete it. Stop it. <laughs> Don't do that. 
So just go, just do it. Once you start, once again, it's going to release those positive endorphins in your brain. And that's what's going to help you keep going. It's going to make you happy. It's going to make you content. You're going to be able to check things off that to-do list. So procrastination warnings, it threatens your success. When you procrastinate, it automatically threatens your ability to even achieve it because you haven't even started it. You're talking about failing at something. Yeah, you're going to fail because you didn't start. What is it saying? Like you fail 100% of the things that you never start. Like, yeah, you're going to fail because you didn't even try. Um, And then it counters the idea of happiness. So yeah, it's going to counteract the idea of happiness because when we do things, it makes us happy. When we don't do things, it makes us unhappy. And then we're using that as a cop-out, basically. We're using it as a coping strategy, as a cop-out, because we're not even starting that thing based on a perceived threat based on what we believe that may not ever be true or may not ever come true. Okay, so the next thing, so reasons we procrastinate. So these are the reasons that we oftentimes procrastinate. So now I will go ahead and say that there is a number of reasons that we procrastinate and we put off for tomorrow. But this is just a very small, a very short list of some of the things that we do that sometimes makes us say, I'll do that later. I'll put that off for tomorrow. So number one, fear of failure. Just talked about that. <laughs> fear of failure. We think that we're not going to do well anyways. I'm, I might as well not start on my lab project because I don't know what I'm doing anyways. I didn't do well in my lab last year. So why even start on it now? You think you're going to fail. You think you're not going to do well enough. Why am I trying to um, go after this 4.0 GPA, like I'm probably not going to get it anyways. Like you're, you have this fear that you're not going to accomplish that thing that you want to do. So you just don't, whether it's, like I said, whether it's academics, whether it's starting a new business, whether it's starting a weight loss journey, whether it's, whether it's even going after something that you're afraid to do that maybe you haven't done before. Um, it could even be something, um, emotional, like going to therapy, you know that that's something that you maybe need to do. You know that um, you've even thought about it. You've even thought about going to therapy, thought about going to a counselor because you're like, I think that this will help me, but I'm just not going to do it because I'm afraid that it's not going to, I'm, I'm afraid it's not going to stick. I'm afraid that I'm not going to use the strategies that they encourage me to use. So you just never go. And you know that it's something that you should do, but you just don't because out of fear of failure, um, it could be driving. Maybe you have a fear of driving on the interstate and you're like, I'm just not going to try because I'm never going to be able to accomplish that. Stop procrastinating. Go for that thing now. Um, other reasons we procrastinate, lack of motivation. We just, we don't feel motivated. We don't feel like we can get it done. We don't feel like we can do it anyways. Like why do it? I don't have the time. I, and, and, and we're going to talk about time. That's why the prioritization comes into play, right? Because you can make the time it's all about when. You can do all the things that you need to do. Right now, Right now, I want you to go ahead and start thinking about a to-do list. I won't actually share it, but start thinking about a to-do list of things that you need to do this week, not just today. Today's Tuesday, but I'm going to say today through Saturday, all the things. And it could be as large as something about a paper, right? You got a paper, you got a lab report, you maybe have a meeting with a professor, you maybe have to meet with a study group. You have to do something with your student organization. Maybe you have a chapter meeting, whatever that thing is, right? Then it could be something related to your room or your car. You need to go wash your car. You need to go get gasoline. You need to go gas up. Maybe you're going home for the weekend. You need to wash clothes, right? If you have an apartment, maybe you need to wash dishes. You need to cook. You need to go exercise. Whatever the things are that you want to get done between today and Saturday, go visit a grandmother. I'm serious. Put all that down. Like, I'm, no matter how big or small, put it on the list. And we'll talk about that in just a second. So um, lack of motivation, feeling overwhelmed. You feel overwhelmed because you have so much to do. And because you have so much to do and you think about it all at once, you just put it all off. And I know that could be triggering because I've had that before. Like you look at this big, long list of all the things that you need to do. And it's scary because you're like, how on earth am I going to get all this done? Like right now, I need to wash my hair. I need to finish some stuff for work. I am going to send my parents this weekend. So I do need to gas on my car. Like I got all these things to do, but there is so little time to do it. And so because you feel overwhelmed, you think, I'm just not, I'm just going to go lay down. <laughs> I know you've done that before. Like you have so much to do and you like, you know what, I'm, 
I'm just going to take a nap real quick and think about it later. You know, and then you eventually never do it. And then you just keep, put, once again, we're just putting it off. It's just a coping mechanism. Like instead of just going to do something. So you feel overwhelmed. Perfectionism. Maybe you're a perfectionist and you want it to be completely A1 on point, 100% all the time. And so if you don't make a 100, you're upset. So you're like, okay, if I don't get a 100 on this paper, you shut down. You procrastinate on the next project because you're like, well, I'm just, I'm not going to get a hundred. If, if you got a nine out of 10 instead of a 10 out of 10 on that thing, you're like, I didn't get a 10 out of 10 on that discussion board. And I sat up there and read all these other people's discussion and I replied to 10 people and I still got a nine out of 10. You're upset, right? Because you wanted to get that 10 out of 10. So you're a perfectionist. Sometimes that will cause us to procrastinate on the next thing because it made us shut down. Maybe go seek out your professor. See what it is that you could do to get that perfect score. You know, this is your grade. Take, once again, take initiative and go see about it. Because like, if you wanted to, I'm, I'm with you. I graduated valedictorian. I didn't do super wonderful <laughs> in college, but I graduated valedictorian of high school. So I was the same way. Like I was a perfectionist. College took me off my high horse. So I'm not a perfectionist anymore because I didn't graduate with a summa cum laude or any of that. You know, I don't know if you've heard that saying, just graduate, thank you, laude. That's, that was me. I just graduated and I'm glad I did. But um, that used to be me. It was perfectionist. So I understand, you know, feeling bad when you don't get the score that you think that you deserve. But go talk to your professor about it. Don't let that cause you to procrastinate and further threaten your goals or threaten your success. Um, and then the last thing on the list is just no solid process, not knowing where to even start. We procrastinate because we don't know how. And to be honest, sometimes that may not be on you, but you do have to take initiative to go and seek the help that you need. Some of you right now, you're probably looking at um, your syllabi and you're looking at a project that you have to do and you don't have the right understanding of what it is that you need to do. I was just talking to someone today and they have a project and they're like, I really don't know what to do. And I'm like, so what are you going to do? She's like, I don't know. Like, go talk to your professor. Go figure out what it is that you need to do because you need to know how to do the project. And it's like, um, whether it was explained and thoroughly thus far, maybe, maybe the project is at the end of the semester and there's still time that they're going to talk over the project with you. But if you're wanting to go ahead and, and start on it now, Go seek the help that you need. Go figure out what it is that you need for the project. Go start reading up on it, reading up on um, in your book, the other syllabi, maybe go seek out a classmate. So get the information that you need. So I say all that to say that if you don't have a process, create that process. Go seek out the information that you need so that you can get started. So these are some of the ways or some of the reasons why we procrastinate, fear of failure, lack of motivation, we feel overwhelmed, we are perfectionists, and then we just don't have a process. So let's talk more about that. How can we combat that? Sorry, y'all get messed up on here. All right. So procrastination warnings. Wait, did we talk about this one? I'm sorry, y'all. Why isn't doing that? All right, here we are. So how to overcome procrastination. What I mentioned earlier, we overcome procrastination by prioritization. So when we learn to prioritize the things that we need to get done, we're less likely to procrastinate on them because we're going to talk about how to list them. So if you see at the bottom, the graphics that I have listed, you'll see it has one, two, and it goes over to a circle. You see you have like a clipboard and a checklist over off the side. You have a checkbox, checkbox. So that's how I want says of deciding the importance and urgency of tasks and things. So from this moment forward, I want you to always think about whatever it is that you need to get done in the sense of importance and urgent. How important is it? How urgent is it to get that thing done? So when I asked you earlier about going ahead and jotting down whether it was physically or just mentally things that you need to get done between today and Saturday, whether it was schoolwork, 
organization work, family, car, whatever, going out to eat with a friend, buying a birthday gift, whatever the thing is, start to think about now the importance of it and the urgency of it. Is it a red flag item or is it something that could be put off the letter? Is it red light, yellow light? Let's think about that. So the three eyes of prioritization. You have immediacy, importance, and interest. So number one, immediacy. This requires your attention right now. This is something that you need to get done sooner rather than later, <laughs> okay? So this is the red flag item. I used to have a supervisor, um, my, first, my first director, when I started working on campus, would say, um, these are on fire today. So I walked into the office and she said, these are on fire today. And I knew that that meant that these are things that need to get done today. This is not something that I needed to put off for tomorrow or for the end of the week. This was something that I had to get done before I left at five o'clock. These are the on fire things. These are your immediacy, requires your attention as of today, as of probably yesterday. So in that list that you created for yourself, what are your immediate objects? What are your immediate things? What are the things that you need to get done right now today? Probably after we get off this call. It's something that requires your immediate attention. Number two is importance. It helps achieve long-term goals and should be started sooner than later. So this is something that is it's important to you. It's definitely important to the outcome of your long-term goal. It may not be as urgent as getting done this very moment. I could probably start this maybe the next couple of days, but it's not gonna be something that I complete right now. That could be an internship. So long-term, you maybe want to work for a radio company um, or you want to be in media. And so you want to go ahead and intern. And I believe the program on campus may require you to have an internship in School of Communication. But if you have to do an internship, maybe it's something that I should start looking into right now. It doesn't matter that I'm a sophomore. If I'm a junior or senior, I definitely should be doing this. But even if I am just a sophomore, I could start go ahead and thinking about what is somewhere that I would want to intern at. So this is definitely helpful for my long-term goal because I'm going to get hands-on experience and a field that I want to spend probably the rest of my life or the, or the biggest part of my life doing, something that I think that I will enjoy and make good money from. And I should probably get started on it a little bit sooner than later because it's going to maybe take me time to identify where I want to intern at. I may have to go through an interview process or an application process and then just decide or schedule when I'm going to start that and then think about what are my um, daily tasks going to be. So something I should get started on sooner rather than keep putting it off, but it's not immediate, right? It's not urgent as of this very moment. Um, and then there's interest. So it's the feeling of wanting to give your attention to something, but it is not a necessity and it's not time sensitive. So this could be something that is, is an interest to you. So it's something that you think that is important, something that you believe that you need to get done but it may not be something that you have to stop, drop, and roll for. It may not be something that you got to do like at by three o'clock today. So, you know, the important thing might be the internship. The interest might be joining a student organization. Um, and so let's say you are interested in media. I know that they have a media organization. If you are interested in, what are some other organizations that are interest related? They have pretty much interest-related organizations for anything. There's Ideal Women. There's MOPs. There, there are sororities and fraternities. There are things that maybe interest you that it may not be important for you to do it at this very moment. Like if you don't join the organization right now, it's probably not going to make or break you. But it's something that you're interested in. And so that's something that you can add to your to-do list. But it does not need to be something that you absolutely positively have to get done today. And so those are some ways that you can think about prioritization is the immediacy of that of that object of that list, the importance of that thing, and then the interest of that thing. And then you can decide where it goes on on your to-do list. So to prioritize your interest. So these are the things, like I said, the student organizations, um, maybe going somewhere. It doesn't just have to be a student organization. It could be going somewhere or doing something. Um, maybe there's this new restaurant downtown that you want to, to go to. That's something that you may want to do with a friend, um, but is it something that needs to be done right now? So let's think about what those interests are and then where they fall. So if it is rewarding, reach out. So if it's an awarding 
interest of yours, go ahead and reach out to that organization. Maybe you want to join AASO. Maybe you want to join the gospel choir. Go ahead and reach out to them now. Um, at least reach out to the organization. See when their next meeting is going to be. If you want to join a volunteer organization, maybe you do want to start getting volunteer hours in which can be twofold, right? So if you wanna start volunteering, that could be an interest to you because you enjoy the work that that organization does. Then that can also look good on your resume as you're beginning to think about postgraduate schools as well as internships and even jobs. So that's a two for one there. So if it's rewarding, go ahead and reach out, go ahead and rearrange and reschedule your, your schedule so that you can fit that thing in. Yet on the flip side, if it's gonna be distracting, then maybe you should delegate that to someone else. Maybe you should put it off for later or maybe not even do it at all. So think about where that falls in um, into your world as something that's rewarding right now or if it's gonna be a distraction right now. If joining a sorority or fraternity is too much for you right now, um, maybe you should put it off for later. It may not be something that you want to do right now. If you're trying to get into nursing school and you're trying to do X, Y, Z, you know, it's like, okay, I've got these two big major things. Maybe that's not something that I need to put my focus and attention to at this moment, but certainly something that I'm still interested in. So I'll just put it on the back burner and I'll just do it later. So start thinking about your interest in that way as well. Is this going to be a reward for me right now? Or is this going to be a distraction for me right now? It's not ever saying that you can't do it, but you're prioritizing for it to fit. Now, this is the quadrant that I was mentioning to you guys earlier. Um, so when you're thinking about all of the things they need to do between today, Tuesday afternoon at 12.40 p.m. going into Saturday, this is the four quadrants. I'm not sure if you've ever seen this, but I love it. And I use it in terms of trying to figure out what and when I need to do things. So quadrant one is going to be your urgent and most important things. So these are, as my supervisor would say, your red flags. This is what's on fire. These are the things that need to be done immediate. So let's say you have a paper due tonight on campus and the paper is a six page paper and you are on page two. I would say <laughs> that that is pretty doggone urgent and it's important. It's important to your overall academics. It's important to your schooling. You're trying to get the 2.5, you're trying to get a 3.0, and it's urgent because it's due at 11.59 p.m., and it's a six-page paper, and you're on page two, and you still have two more classes today, and you're technically scheduled to work. <laughs> so, baby, that's that's pretty doggone important. So, I would say that's going to be at the top of your list. So, that may be something that you want to do immediately. Every single thing on your to-do list, it will fall in one of these quadrants and that will determine what you need to do when. Quadrant two is not urgent, yet it's important to you. So that could be something like, um, like the internship, right? So maybe you do want to get into an internship. Maybe you're a junior and you're going into your senior year and you know, I need to solidify an internship because I need that to help me because when I graduate, I'm trying to get a good job. I'm trying to get more experience. So it may not be urgent at this very moment, but it is important to you. So you may not need to stop, drop, and roll and do that thing right now, but you still need to keep that at the top of your list because that's something that needs to be done pretty quickly. Um, and then quadrant three, it's urgent, but it's not important. So let's say urgent and not important, that could be something like your laundry or gasoline in your car. So let's say you have no clean clothes. <laughs> I'm just using an example. You have no clean clothes. It's urgent because baby, I need you to have some clean underwear, right? But it's not important for me to stop what I'm doing. Like I don't need to skip class to go do my laundry. I can certainly do that later, but it is urgent. <laughs> so that is something that I need to do probably as soon as I get out of class or after my class and my work schedule. Before I go to bed tonight, I'll throw a load, a small load in there just so I'll have some things to wear for tomorrow. So it's urgent, but it's not important right now. I don't have to be like, girl, I gotta go, I gotta do my clothes. Okay, but baby, you still got that, that six page paper that's due. So that's, you need to do that number one, right? So it falls in these quadrants. You, you see how it's going? Okay, quadrant four, it's not urgent and it's not important. So this could be, I have a friend who's getting married pretty soon. And so I want to get her a gift. So it's not urgent or important. Her, her wedding is not till March. 
um, the end of March. So it's just the middle of February. I still have time to get her wedding gift. So it's not urgent or important enough for me to stop what I'm doing right this moment. Like I'm fretting over what am I going to get this girl for her wedding? Like, oh my gosh, like this girl wedding coming up. I've been on her since high school. Like, what am I going to get her for a wedding? Like, baby, I'm calm down because I still got this six page paper that I got to do tonight and I'm on page two. That's my quadrant one. So focus on your quadrant ones right now, because those are the things that are on fire. Those are the things that are red flags. Those are the things that you need to get done pretty immediately. Okay, it was nice having you, Donna. You go take your exam and the best of luck to you, okay? Um, so quadrant one is urgent and it's important. So make sure that um, these are the things that you get done really, really quickly. Quadrant two, it's not urgent, but it is important to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that towards the top of my list but I'm not gonna stop what I'm doing this very moment. Urgent and not important. It's an urgent, I need to get it done, but it's not important enough for me to be like, okay, I gotta get this done, it's the very moment. And then of course, quadrant four is not important and it's not urgent. So it's not something that I have to stop to go do. Like I wanna make shrimp and grits later on and I need some more shrimp. Okay, I wanna do that, but I can do that when I get out of class. Like I can do that when I get off work. Like I don't have to stop what I'm doing right now to go do that, you know what I'm saying? So when you're thinking about your to-do list, when you're thinking about all the things that you have to get done, always think about this quadrant. Always think about where does this fall in place? This, my friends, is what we call prioritization. What you just did was prioritized your time. You prioritized your to-do list. There are some things that you still have to get done today. It's what, 1245? It's 1245 today. There are still many things that you have that you desire to get done where do they fall in these quadrants? Where, where should you put them? And that is where I urge you to start is that quadrant one, and then you work your way around, okay? And if you do this, it will help you stay on track. And ultimately we do these things to help us from what? Procrastinating. Because at some point you're gonna get them all done, but it's the importance of when you need to get them done. So next we have takeaways to prioritize. So. Thinking about prioritizing, these are just some takeaways. Time sensitive, how time sensitive is that thing? Um, so thinking about when you need to get that thing done, do I need to get it done now? Is it something that I can put off for later? Is it a red flag? Is it on fire? Um, takes time. How much time will this particular task take? Should I ask for help? Am I gonna need some assistance with this? Um, it takes motivation, right? So. Um, let me do something that's going to release some positive endorphins so that it will motivate me to continue on to this task. When I prioritize things, it helps me feel good. I feel like Santa Claus, right? I feel like I've made my list. I've checked it twice. I put it in my quadrants and I've begun to check things off. Um, it takes people. Sometimes when you're prioritizing your work, you will have to enlist help from other people um, because certain tasks on your to-do list may require assistance. We talked about earlier, delegating things, maybe saying no to certain things, and that will happen. You won't be able to say yes to everyone if you're thinking about your time and what it is that you need to do for you. And then at the end, it takes money. How much money will I need to get this particular task completed, whether it's buying the shrimp for my grits or whether it's purchasing that gift for my friend? Um, so that will, that will determine where I am in my to-do list because, oh, I got to go get some money to do this particular task. All right, so how to prevent, how to, excuse me, how to prevent procrastination through prioritization. So how do we get there? Um, well, number one, create a running list of tasks. So you should always have a running list of things that you need to do. So just as Santa has this list, right? Once you check off things, you're still adding right? Your list will probably never get to zero. And that's okay, because you're going to feel good when you see 15 checks. And maybe you've added three more things, but it should always be a running list of things that you're doing, because that keeps you from procrastinating. If you just make a list one time, you check everything off, and then you're like, okay, I fulfilled that goal. Woo, let me go celebrate. Let me go lay down. I'm sure there are still things that you have to do, right? If you look at your syllabus, there are still things that have to be submitted in March and in April, right, for all your classes. So you're never completely done, but that's okay. As long as you're creating a time schedule of when you're doing each of those things, you're putting them in the quadrants, you'll be fine. So there should always be a running list of tasks, getting the information out of your head 
and onto paper will help ease your procrastination. Um, there's so many things that are always going on in our brains. I often will use this example. I'll ask students and they come to the office. I'll say, what'd you eat for dinner last Monday? And they're like, what? I'm like, not, not yesterday, Monday. What did you eat for dinner last Monday? I'm like, I don't know. Like, exactly. We have so many things that go on in our brains from day to day. We just had Valentine's Day. We just had the Super Bowl. We had all these things going on. And I'm asking you what you had for dinner last Monday? There's so much going on in our heads. There are things that you got to do today. There's so many things that you have to do that people will never know. So many things that are going on in your brain that I, your family, your friends, your classmates, your professors will never know. And you need to help yourself by getting that stuff out of your head and onto paper. You've got things for classes that you got to get done, friends, there's families, all types of things. Help yourself ease the frustration and the potential to procrastinate on those things by putting them out on paper. So capture your now and review it later, right? So get it out now and then you can keep reviewing it throughout the week. Secondly, organize the list based on priorities. So that's what we talked about, right? So we talked about quadrants. So you want to organize your list based on order of importance versus urgency and importance. And then number three, track and communicate your progress. So develop a process to complete all of the stakeholders in a loop about the progress, the milestones, and setbacks. This allows you to improve, allows you for improved future prioritization and scheduling. So make sure to keep track. And I'll talk a little bit um, in just a second about tracking. So really quickly, time management strategies for prioritization. Goal setting. We talk a lot about that, right? I talked about that earlier, smart goals. This always helps us complete things. It helps us, helps us with our time management. Set some goals. What is it that you want to get done today? What is it that you want to get done in the next 30 days or the next 90 days? Make it fun. A lot of times, if you're like me, I'll set goals for events in my life. So something I want to get done by my birthday. My birthday is in May. Okay. So it's like, what do I want to get done by my birthday? What is it that I want to get done by the summer or by the end of the semester? Um, so make it goals. Set some goals for yourself. Make it fun. Um, chunking and time boxing. So assign an appropriate and manageable amount of time to tasks depending on their value to prevent multitasking. So sometimes we think we can multitask and we really can't. Um, we'll do certain things and then we'll say, I could do this while I'm doing that. And then it just kind of makes the other thing kind of sucky because we didn't give it our full and undivided attention. So create time chunks in your day to do certain things. So like, okay, I'll use my morning to do this. I'll do this fun thing around lunch when I have some free time, and then I'll do this other thing at the end of the day. So time boxing and chunking. Create a schedule. So develop a consistent schedule for completing tasks, which increases your concentration and your efficiency. So if you're a morning person, say, okay, I'll go exercise in the morning, and then I'll do exercise, or excuse me, I'll exercise my right to study and do homework or whatever in the middle of the day. And I know that I maybe get sleepy at the in the end of the evening is and, and at night. So I'll use that time to do more task related things around the house like laundry. So think about what works best for your schedule. So I'll be up and going early in the morning. And as the day progresses, I kind of lose energy. I'll do those more easier, more less thought provoking tasks. So create a schedule that works for you. And then scheduling breaks, making sure that you're rewarding yourself with breaks in between your tasks. This keeps you more productive and it gives you some refreshing um, feelings. It give, keeps you refreshed. So these are those apps I talked about or those ways I talked about keeping up with your things. So there's an app for that. There's literally an app for everything these days. So on your smart device, your iOS or Android device, um, feel free to look into some of these apps. I'll be honest, I don't use them. I am old and traditional, and I simply use a checkbox, a to-do list. I use my Outlook calendar faithfully, um, but certainly feel the use, um, the, the wherewithal to use these apps. So take a screenshot, look into some of these apps, jot some of them down, um, and then you can use them as you're trying to keep track of your time and avoid procrastination and keeping up with your prioritization. So the last thing are just some considerations as you move forward. So mindset matters. So tasks aren't always as taxing as they seem. 
if you approach them with confidence and optimism. So to be honest, a lot of things are just hard before we get started. And once we get started, we realize it was not as difficult as we thought it was going to be. I know that I can attest to that, even when it comes down to things like going to the gym. I am not a going to the gym in the morning type person, but I am in a February weight loss challenge with some friends. And I went to the gym maybe three times in the morning last week. I go to Planet Fitness. And um, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. This is going to suck. And on those particular mornings that I went to the gym in the morning, I felt great those days. I was like, dang, that wasn't that bad. It kind of felt good. You know, I've been working eight. So I was there like around 5, 530. So that's unusual, but I felt good. I felt energized. And once I got there, I kind of didn't want to leave. And I was like, dang, I got to go. I got to get ready for work. But it felt good. You know, like I'm pumping iron. So truly the tasks aren't always as taxing. Like we think there's this huge cloud over our heads because we are just, we have it in our minds that it's going to be terrible. It's going to take too long. That paper is going to take too long. But really once you get started, it's probably not going to take as long as you think it is. And Truthfully, there's probably somebody else that's in the same boat as you. So if you guys are doing it together, it makes it just as much fun because if you're miserable, you're going to at least be miserable together. And so that that camaraderie will help you. So it's not as bad as it seems. If you approach it with confidence and optimism, change your thoughts. It all begins up here. So consider changing how you think about it. Your mindset truly does matter. Um, get to the root of your procrastination. So why are you procrastinating? Reflect on your reasons for procrastination and create creatively develop ways to combat them. So if you know that you're procrastinating because you don't understand, well, why don't you get your understanding? Get the understanding that you need. And once you do, you may feel more empowered to just start it. Preferred working conditions. Make sure that you are in a location, in a space that helps you feel productive. Sometimes we don't feel good about doing the work because we don't like where we're doing the work at. <laughs> if you don't like working in your cold residence hall, maybe go somewhere else that's a little bit more warm and inviting. It could be a Starbucks. It could be one of the very, very many study spaces in the library. It could be the Thad Cochran Center. And maybe you like to be around people. So maybe just going to Starbucks or outside. It's been pretty days for the last couple of days. So going outside. Or if you're not a morning person, if you're a night person or a night person versus a morning person, but consider your working environments and your condition. So where are you trying to be productive? Make sure that it's conducive to you. And then there's no one size fit all approach. So develop a time management schedule that works best for you. So what works best for me, it won't work best for you and vice versa. Um, what works best for your friend or your classmate or you won't work best for them and that's okay. Um, so it may take a little bit of time to decide and to understand what is good for you. So it may take going through all those different apps. It may take understanding the quadrant list a couple of weeks before you get into a good habit. Um, but do what you what you find is best for you and only you. So um, this has come to the end of our presentation, but I just want to share our contact information. We are located in Cook Library at room 138. This is on the first floor. This is our phone number, our email address, and our website. So if you have any questions, feel free to email us, call us, um, or look on the website. There are a couple other success expert presentations that are going to be happening next month and in April. Um, so you are certainly welcome to those as well. And we are social. So we're on social media. So follow us on Instagram, as well as Facebook and YouTube. We are on YouTube and on Twitter. So feel free to reach out to us on those social sites as well, so that you could be more aware of workshops and presentations such as these, and any other presentations, workshops, or opportunities that we may have, not only just success related, but even if it comes down to scholarships and things like that, so you can be aware um, of those opportunities from our office and from the university as well. So at this time, that brings me to the end of our presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to put those in the chat or stick around. And I hope that you will come and visit us and come to some of our other success presentations. Thanks so much for coming today. Have a great day.